I live in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and Is this vacationing out here? Uh, no, I'm here for an uh, uh, audition at USC. Hey, yeah, not bad. <laughs> Hope it goes well for you. Yeah. Um, so, my, my question to you would be, have you ever considered, uh, and I don't want to preach my specific view of the Bible as the best one, but have you ever considered the Bible as a piece of literature uh, instead of a, a, a holy text or a historical uh, document? There it is, a religious text. But it is also historical. There's many different genres in the Bible. You have poetry for some of it. And you got historical narrative for others. You look at it you know, as like Dickens, or you look yeah. at God as, as merely a character. Do you, think the news, do you think the newspaper is literature? I mean, literature is words on paper. Well, the Bible as a religious text never really made sense to me because it seemed like a lot of um, extrapolation on what was actually written down there. But taking such as, well, I mean. The, the rituals and the, the I guess like, all the things that which rituals? Uh, I'm not I'm not trying to say like specifically. With, well, you have to. In other, if you're making a point, you have to be specific. No, I don't. I don't actually. I just mean. But what are you communicating to me? This is another form of communication, not just literal. But now I'm looking at the genre of your speech. Right. Okay. What is it? So what I'm trying to say is, if you just, I'm not trying to fight with you. I'm just. I, trying, I'm not saying you are. I'm just, just trying to figure out what you're saying. Hold up, hold on a second. Let me okay. Speak. Okay. So, um, oh, now you I completely forgot what I was talking about. Could you just remind me real quick? You were saying that you oh, okay. are as, not as wondering literature. What so the things that I found in the Bible as literature, it seemed like God was more of a metaphor and uh, 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 a character that could be learned from, in the same way that that it was expressed by Jesus. It seemed it seemed like. God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, all tied in as as characters, not necessarily as um, real, you know, tangible things. Okay, and how did you come to that conclusion? Because it seemed like God's character traits, going from the Old Testament up through the New Testament, as a developing character, he started out, I mean, you have pre-flood God and you have post-flood God, two distinctly different kind of characters and yet still under the same In what way? Were they different? Um, I guess mean <laughs> versus not mean. No, that's not true. Um, in Malachi, the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. There's no shadow or shifting uh, with God. And you do find a very uh, wrathful God in the Old Testament and a very gracious God. I mean, the Jewish people were so rebellious. They, des they deserve to get their, for lack of better words, their, their butt whipped. I mean, big time. Yeah. But God was continuously gracious with them all the way. And in the New Testament, you find God's wrath as well. He nixed uh, Ananias and Sapphira for lying uh, about the different monies that they were collecting. Yeah, and God was killed. About, and then I'm you have a revelation the revelation where Christ is going to return. 50,000 people as a, as a historical... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, sir. Like... Uh, a historical narrative of something happening is just... I mean, you look at today, all types, types of people are slaughtered today. If God was choosing to write this in his scripture, he could historically narrate. I killed those people in Katrina, you know, what they call the Katrina hurricane, but really it was me. God is sovereignly in control of all things, and he's the one who killed the people there by the winds. He uses means to end. And so that's just him recording. Uh, he is very wrathful today. He sends people to hell. So Revelation talks about him coming back with some severe vengeance. It's New Testament. There's no, there's no a difference from Old Testament to New Testament God or pre-flood, post-flood, as you put it. Okay. I don't know. It just seems like to me, as a student, as somebody who once was a small child and very impressionable, it, it seems like you're closing a door to something that um, could make sense to to a, a child, and you're almost. I guess taking something that makes a lot of sense to a lot of people and uh, and damning it with you know something. What like makes it. sense? So how do you? What makes sense? Uh, evolution makes sense to me. How does that make sense to you? Uh, because it's a logical per it's a logical idea. Darwin's idea is, is a how is it idea. logical? Well, because it's a logical progression of events. If you start with you know. It, it, Possibly there's, there's another person oh, actually. Let me, let me might, clear, let me clear up real quick. Are you, are you a theistic evolutionist, meaning God put the things in order to evolve, or are you an atheistic evolutionist? Mm. That makes a big difference. I, I'm actually agnostic on the whole, whole <laughs> issue of God. Actually. But yeah, you believe in evolution. Okay, I want to hear your... I, I don't believe in it so much as it, the concept. It, 
it makes sense logical. to you. Okay, what, what's logical about it? So, the, it's it's so much. It's not so much evolution as a whole as natural uh, selection. The fundamental concept behind it makes a whole lot of sense. Um, if you understand how uh, genetics work, even I mean, if it, it, okay, well maybe there's there's someone else who might be able to better. Well, hold on. Describe. <laughs> if you believe something, now I don't well, the, the, necessarily put you on the spot, but you ought to have okay, a so grasp of it. To be able to... Whenever a genetic mutation occurs, if it is positive, it would follow that it that um, that species would be better suited to survive. And so, if you, I, I, I feel like this is all uh, things that I've learned from someone who's actually from an impressionable young mind. He just bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Well, I mean, it I just, mean, you said that earlier about. When they say, uh, you know, survival of the fittest proves evolution. No, it doesn't. It proves that something survived. Nothing more can follow from the fact that, you know, I mean, if, for instance, if you took a, a school of fish swimming through and a uh, whale came through and chomped them, did the ones that got away, were they necessarily fit, more fit? No. Not they could have just been most luckily in the right place at the right time. That's number one. But also, even if they were more fit and had uh, faster uh, mechanisms in, in their fins to swim, what does that prove but that they were more fit? That says nothing whatsoever of evolution. I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, bu it's a big smoke screen that the evolutionists put out there. One fallacious argument after another of things that they just assume. They don't prove. It says God is one and there is no other. Yeah, it says that. Okay. Now, uh, I know that you, you think... God is something other than one, and there is something other. I mean, you know, you, you, uh... By whose definition of one? Yours or the scriptures? Okay, but I'm, I'm just I'm making it clear that, you know, you, you, uh... No, no, I think it's fair that scripture should define itself as far as its own teachings and doctrines, right? You, you believe that Jesus was God and all that is, um, not only do I think it's wrong, but I also think it causes a lot of problems. How so? He, he's the one who can read, uh, deem your okay. soul, Before make you have peace with God. That's not trouble, okay. that's the opposite of. For okay. that which you're gonna be in deep No, view. I'd love to answer that, but I just wanna like uh, conclude on the one point I, I was trying to make. And that is, is that there is a conflict with a belief system that says, that claims that the Bible says that there's a trinity. All I'm saying is, is when it says very clearly, God is one, and there is no other. Um, you you have to be able to just. So then, who is that God that we're talking about? And there is no other. There's no problem here. If it says God is one, and there is no other. Yeah, there's one God. And you and you. Now, how he's defining himself is what is that uh, okay. on the table here? See, what we're trying to figure out. Is, if he has given. Revelation that states that he is three persons in one God. Tom, wait a minute, Tom. Is the God that's so perfect that inspired and dictated the Bible in the way you think, where the whole thing is God's word, uh, is it so easy for you to accept that he could be so clumsy to word it? Why do you say clumsy? That's, that's arbitrary. It would be very... That's your, You it, think it's clumsy. It doesn't mean it actually when, is. When it says God is one and there is no other, it's... You could, and yet, there really is a trinity, like you claim. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, like scripture claims. And if it claims okay, that, go ahead. Like Finish scripture yours. claims. But what I'm saying is, it would be very sloppy to have oh, two or three phrases in that Bible where it says God is one and there is no other. It's very... No, all it's saying is, I am the Lord, as defined in scripture, and there is no other. So when you talk about Shiva or... You know, the different uh, Hindu deities out there, you talk about Allah, they don't exist, they're demons. Or okay, maybe okay. just imagination. Uh, yeah, of he men's. wants to respond. Well, you can bounce back in, go back and forth, go, you know. Go ahead. So we don't have Mike hogging. Yeah. I, I prefer uh, many um, people. Great Shema, Great Shema is uh, Hero Israel, uh, the Lord is one. And the word one there is Ehad in Hebrew. Are you a Hebrew scholar? Yeah, well, I know a little bit. <laughs> uh, and uh, when the spies came up out of the promised land they had a giant ehad of grapes all right it was it was one 
great bundle of grapes, yet it wasn't just one grape. It was a whole cluster of grapes on the one vine. So that's that's what the word is called. It doesn't mean a mathematical absolute one. It can mean a united one. Now, I'm not saying it's 100% uh, you know, easy to understand. Certainly our human minds have a little difficulty grasping, but that's what you would expect. And this is with regards to any of the attributes of God, omniscience, omnipotence, uh, eternality. All those things are hard for our human finite minds to grapple. That's why Paul said in the New Testament, without controversy, great is the mystery of God. For God was manifest in the flesh, and he gives a long list, and it's totally Christ deified and explains that you know, it's still hard to grasp in our own you know, finite understanding. But it's not contradictory, and it is in some uh, smaller measure easy to apprehend. And so we cannot accept Unitarians. T.D. Jakes is going to burn in hell if he doesn't repent of his way and uh, believe in the one true and living God. So I don't say that with any glee. I say that with fear for him and for anybody who uh, is going down that road. We will all have to face our maker. You are your own worst enemy, folks. Uh, that is the truth. What are you going to do on that day? I mean, seriously, <laughs> what are you going to do? Wrong about what? There is no God. Religion has ruined There's no God? Yeah, atheist religion has ruined the world. But atheistic mentality, which rails against God, people who bought, kill their kids in the womb uh, because of mentality that, well, we're just matter in motion. It's just a bunch of cells. It's just a glob of tissue. Nothing inherently valuable about human life. God is one. There is no other. Would you have, have you ever used that phrase to tell someone about God? Not often, but yeah, I've used it See, before. See, you would never say God is one, there is no other. God is one, and there is no other, folks. Make sure you have the right God. You have Otherwise, not, you will uh, you have never, suffer. You have never said it that way. Because, because honestly, That's two times at least. to say God is one, there is no other, has a conflict. No, it doesn't. Only in your brain. Okay, fine, fine. The yeah. Bible says very simply that there is one God, and within the nature of that one God, there are three what we understand as persons. Now, the only reason why we use the word person is because we're finite describing an infinite God. The Father does not have arms and legs. He's not a male. He's not a female. He's not a dog. He's not a cat. The Spirit doesn't have arms and legs. He's not a male. He's not a female. He's not a dog or a cat. The, the person of the Son, the Christ, came and was incarnated in flesh and became a man. So that son, who is now called Jesus, does have a physical body and he is a man. But they share the same nature. Now, earlier somebody asked me if Jesus was here on earth and he has locality and he's physical, then how can he be omnipresent? Well, here's the answer to that. Omnipresence does not, is not individual to each member of the Godhead. The Father doesn't have his own omnipresence and the Son have his own omnipresence and the Spirit have, they're all the one God. So when, when the Son is here and has locality within human flesh, the Father and the Spirit still are omnipresent, and they're still the one God. You, you know, Henry, Henry I've, I've invited you several times to sit down. I'll give you my phone number if you want to, and we'll open up books and we'll go through things. When we're out here, I do a lot of things from memory, but I will open up the Bible. I will go down there and down that aisle.